In combat missions, attack helicopters are indispensable tools. They are generally operated in squads and pairs. The first helicopter fires at ground targets, while the second helicopter covers them. As a result of heavy machine guns and missile fire, any enemy fortified area becomes a plowed field. When attack aircraft enter enemy positions, they find nothing more than burning armored vehicles and mountains of dead and wounded enemy soldiers. Even one attack helicopter can change the course of a battle. A super helicopter has been tested and will soon be incorporated into the British Army Air Corps. This is good news because the new attack helicopter will boost NATO's combat capability. The Augusta Westland WAH-64D helicopter is the primary attack helicopter of the Army Air Corps. In six missions between September 7, 2012 and January 2013, Prince Henry, Duke of Sussex, destroyed 25 Taliban. Among the ones killed was a Taliban leader. Some people may be skeptical about this information, but it is customary to believe the representatives of the royal family. Each time he returned to base, Prince Henry reviewed the helicopter video recordings of the murders. Of course, you notice that the Augusta Westland WAH-64D is very similar to the Apache. It is a licensed version of the Boeing AH-64D Apache Longbow attack helicopter. While raiding enemy airfields, the British version boasts stronger engines and more powerful CRV-7 missiles capable of breaking through pillboxes and concrete aircraft hangars. CRV-7s are the world's most powerful attack airborne rockets. All NATO nations use CRV-7s except for the United States. This is a powerful weapon. Augusta Westland proved to be a highly efficient helicopter during the mission of the British contingent in Afghanistan. However, the attack helicopter had one unpleasant drawback. It had to be repaired every eight weeks. This added additional cost to logistics and affected missions planning. There was no British command. Although they are sometimes used for strike operations, other helicopters in the Army Air Corps do not attack helicopters. For instance, the French company Aerospatiale and the British company Westland developed the multi-purpose military helicopter Westland Gazelle AH-1. Westland Gazelle has hard points for weapons. The AGM-114 Hellfire type anti-tank missiles are usually placed there. But this is ridiculous compared to the 76 missiles on board the Westland Apache. Therefore, multi-purpose military helicopters are designed for reconnaissance and surveillance, communications, transportation of personnel, evacuation of the wounded, and transportation of small loads. Still, they are rarely used for assault operations. The French Gazelle participated in several wars, including the June 1982 battle in Lebanon when dozens of Gazelles destroyed several Israeli tanks and armored personnel carriers in the Syrian Air Force. One of the most ridiculous incidents involving Westland Gazelle AH-1 helicopters occurred during the Falklands War. Two Westland Gazelles were shot down by the Argentines when British forces landed on the island. Another British helicopter crashed from a friendly fire. Sailors of a British destroyer mistook their helicopter for a C-130 Hercules from Argentina. As the world's fastest helicopter, the Westland Lynx AH-7A helicopter can't be ignored and belongs to the Universal Helicopter class. The Westland Lynx AH-7A easily maneuvers and copes with tanks. Although it has eight anti-tank missiles, it is not suitable for assault missions because of its lack of armor and fixed automatic cannon. Pilots of Westland Lynx are forced to turn around and turn to conduct heavy fire. Each maneuver can be the last since Westland Lynx lacks radiation warning and capture systems. Therefore, an enemy fighter with man pads can destroy a helicopter with a single start if they are experienced. Experienced Westland Lynx pilots can fly up to 82 feet as a way out. Then a missile fired from a man pads will most likely fly past. This is one of ManPad's features. Westland Lynx helicopters can be fatally injured at ultra-low altitudes because their cockpit skin cannot protect them from machine gun fire. Therefore, Westland Lynx helicopters hide in the terrain folds and stay away from combat zones during missions. It is possible for pilots to use unguided missiles in some situations without entering enemy air defense areas. 
pilots of the Westland Lynx aircraft launch missiles with the nose of the helicopter hold up to increase range. However, such strikes are 10 times less effective than attacks carried out by classic attack helicopters. Therefore, the British command has developed a specification for a new attack helicopter based on the Leonardo AW249 concept. In the British city of Yeovil, serial production will begin on a new production line. The project involves more than 70 companies from England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Unlike the British version of Apache, the new British helicopter has a combat radius of 500 miles. It will be powered by two engines. Each engine will have a power output of 2,500 horsepower, 13% more power than the Apache engines. It is possible to boost engines to increase power by 40%. Using such indicators, an attack helicopter can appear over enemy territory at any moment. One can only sympathize with those on the ground in such a situation. After all, the new British attack helicopter is equipped with a 20mm automatic cannon with a rotary mechanism. Pilots don't have to hover in the air at any point when firing. Under 20mm caliber shells, survival is unlikely. Air-to-ground missiles are available to destroy armored vehicles and fortified positions. Six suspension points are provided for their placement under short wings. Although the number of missiles is unknown, it can be assumed that the stock will be at least 76 missiles since the helicopter's carrying capacity is not inferior to Apache's. As part of its airborne protection complex, the new British helicopter is equipped with an infrared missile warning system and a radar warning system. Man pads will not be able to easily target the new helicopter because it can fly missions over the battlefield directly. It may be possible for the new British attack helicopter to have additional air-to-air -air missiles so that it can not only evade enemy missiles but also attack air targets such as enemy helicopters. A helmet-mounted sight will be provided to the pilots of the new attack helicopter. Furthermore, the onboard targeting system will be integrated into the Link 16 tactical network, enabling the pilots to receive more information about the battlefield and lurking threats. The new helicopter fuselage is made of stealth elements and has increased impact resistance. Attack helicopter cockpits will be armored, but the most exciting thing is that the British insisted that the upgraded helicopter be designed to be deployed on ships. Leonardo engineers met customer needs. Leonardo is the parent company of Augusta Westland, Alania Arashi, DRS Technologies, Celix ES, Automalera, and WAS. Despite being based in Rome, the company has branches, production centers, and engineering divisions throughout Europe, including the UK, which is why it has had a long and strong relationship with the British Army Air Corps Command for many years. Today, NATO's primary attack helicopter remains the Boeing AH-64 Apache. There is no doubt that this is the best aircraft in history. Recently, it was upgraded to the AH-64E version 6 standard. The self-diagnosis system and the longbow radar can now operate over the sea thanks to improvements. Due to Apache's inferior combat radius compared to many competitors, the U.S. Army requires the manufacturer to increase it. In addition, Boeing is developing a folding wing and landing gear version of the AH-64F. This solution helps improve the dynamic performance of the helicopter. The command seems interested in something other than this model. The Apache is running out of time. Future Vertical Lift FVL, is starting to show signs on the horizon. A convertiplane combines the advantages of both an aircraft and a helicopter. The Bell V280 Velour was the first in the future vertical lift family, a long-range transport helicopter and assault helicopter. This project was approved by the U.S. Department of Defense on December 5, 2022. A Bell V280 helicopter is expected to be delivered to the U.S. military in 2025. Around 2,000 UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters will be replaced with the new Bell V-280s by 2030. The contract is valued at $1.3 billion. In terms of the strike version of the Bell V-280, it is fantastic. A tilt rotor can carry 4.5 tons, over twice as much as Apache's most advanced version. This means the Bell can carry two times as many weapons as Apache could. Such a percussion apparatus cannot be saved under these circumstances. The V-280 has a combat radius of at least 1,100 miles 
and reaches speeds of 320 miles per hour. There are no helicopters in the world more powerful. The technical performance of the V-280 tilt rotor is fundamentally changing the tactics of using strike aircraft. In one of our following videos, we will definitely explore all the nuances of possible missions involving this newest tilt rotor.